سورة عراف أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today we'll start with Surah Araf and this is group 2 of our Makki Madani classification or groupings. This is group 2 and this is a pair. The group 2 as I had mentioned yesterday consists of 4 surahs. The first two are Makki and it forms a pair and the next two are Madani and it forms a pair. Yesterday we discussed about we we had a rapid and a brief explanation of Surah An'am and today inshallah we intend to look at Surah Araf. So Surah An'am and Araf they will form a pair and both are Makki Surahs and so we, with this introduction we begin with Surah Araf. Alif, Lam, Mim, Saad, a book revealed unto thee. So let thy heart be oppressed no more by any difficulty on that account that with it thou mightest warn the erring and a reminder to the believers. Follow, O men, the revelation given unto you from your Lord, and follow not as friends or protectors other than him. Little it is ye remember of admonition. How many towns have we destroyed for their sins? Our punishment took them on a sudden night, on a sudden by night while they were while they slept for their afternoon rest. So our punishment took them on a sudden by night or while they slept for their afternoon rest. When thus our punishment took them, no cry did they utter, but this indeed we did, we did wrong. Then shall we question those to whom our message was sent and those by whom we sent it. And verily we shall recount their whole story with knowledge. For we were never absent at any time or place. The, ba the balance that day will be true to a nicety. Those whose scale of good will be heavy will prosper. Those whose scale will be light will find their souls in perdition. For that they wrongfully treated our signs. It is we who have placed you with authority on earth and provided you therein with means for the fulfillment of your life. Small are the thanks that he gave. It is we who created you and gave you shape. Then we bade the angels prostrate to Adam salam, and they prostrated not so Iblis. He refused to be of those who prostrate. So this is section 2 and this is verse number 11 where the story of Adam salam, and how salam and Iblis uh, it is repeated. If you remember the last time we read this story was in Surah Baqarah. That was the first occurrence of the story of Adam al Islam and Iblis. And this is the second occurrence in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, of the story of Adam al Islam and Iblis. And, and the story is repeated some seven times in the Quran, and each time it gives some additional information. And uh, it is mentioned also in Surah Qahf, and also in Surahs before it and after it. But there is something extremely remarkable about the story about this narration which is mentioned in Surah Kaha. So in that there is a specific additional information. As I said, each time the story is repeated, it gives some additional information about the story. So when we reach Surah Kahaf, inshallah, we'll see what that additional information is. And here also, we already remember what's mentioned in Surah Baqarah. We did it just a few days back, so we should remember it. And we will look at what additional information this story provides. It, it is sometimes said that why is, is the single story mentioned so many times in the Quran? Why is this repetition there in the Quran? The answer to this question is uh, the Quran was revealed in bits and parts and every time a specific aspect needed to be informed to the people to serve a specific purpose, it was done so. Even then, the, the stories are, are threaded together in, in the different narrations in such a manner that whatever information is provided at that point of time is most appropriate if we take the context in, into account of what follows before and after it and in the story itself. So with this small explanation, let's proceed with the story and try to under, appreciate what's the additional piece of information, how it helps us. Allah said, what prevented thee from prostrating when I commanded thee? He said, I am better than he. 
Thou didst create me from fire and him from clay. Allah said, Get thee down from it. It is not for thee to be arrogant here. Get out, for thou art of the meanest of creatures. He said, Give me respite till the day they are raised up. Allah said, Be thou among those who have respite. He said, Because thou hast thrown me out of thy way, lo, I will lie in wait for them on thy straight way. Then will I assault them from before them and behind them, from, from their right and their left, nor will thou find most of them gratitude for thy mercies. Allah said, Get out from this, despised and expelled. If any of the if any of them follow thee, hell will I fill with you all. Ya Adam, O Adam. O Adam alayhi salam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden, and enjoy its good things as you wish. But approach not this tree, lest to become of the unjust. We have explained about the, the narration of this tree, why the reference to this tree and not the specific name of this tree, during a discussion on Surah Baqarah. Uh, we already discussed in Surah Baqarah. <clears throat> then began Satan to whisper suggestions to them in order to reveal to them their shame that was hidden from them before. He said, your Lord only forbid you this tree, lest you should become, lest you should become angels or such things as live forever. And he swore to them both that he was their sincere advisor. Now, uh, the part which mentions that uh, in order to reveal them the shame that was hidden from them before, there can be two interpretations. One is that they had some sort of covering of their bodies. That is one possible interpretation. And when they ate the fruit that was forbidden, the forbidden fruit, uh, that uh, was actually... Uh, taken away and so the, the shame manifested and the second interpretation is that uh, they did not have the consciousness of shame that consciousness itself was absent and that that consciousness once they ate of the ate of the fruit of the forbidden fruit that consciousness became or transformed from the dormant or the latent state to the active state and so they now had the realization of that shame so both the interpretations are possible. The second interpretation is what I consider more uh, agreeable to, or that's my opinion. So he swore to them both that he was their sincere advisor. So by deceit, he brought about their fall. When they tasted of the tree, their shameful parts became manifest to them. So how this became manifest to them, this is what we had discussed just now about the two possible interpretation of which I like to go with the second interpretation that the consciousness itself was absent and now it was made active in them. And they began to sew together the leaves of garden over their bodies and their Lord called unto them, did I not forbid you that tree and tell you that Satan was an avowed enemy unto you? So this is the part which is important. The statement is very important, specifically this part Inna shaytana lakuma adu mubin. Now, now there is a beauty in the Arabic grammar, uh, which uh, I mean, it's not a beauty. It's a grammatical rule. It's a gr grammatical construct for Arabic as a language. Different languages will have different ways to express different things. In Arabic, uh, there is something called singular. There's something called dual, and there's something called plural. Singular, dual, and plural. In the other languages, for example, in English, we have singular and plural. There's no concept of dual. Dual is treated as a subset of plural. It's considered to be plural. So this part, inna shaitana lakuma adu mubin. Verily, Satan, the translation that they have made is, is appropriate in a way, uh, that Satan, that Satan was an avowed enemy unto you. So, inna shaitana, that is indeed uh, the Satan, lakuma, is for you too. Now, the word lakuma is dual. So, is for you too because this is more appropriate because there was no humanity. Only the two of them were present. Uh, our father, Adam al-Islam, and our mother, Hawa Salamun alayha. So, lakuma, that is why the dual form is used, lakuma. Otherwise, lakum would be the plural form. Lakuma adu wum mubin. Adu is enemy. Adu wum mubin. And uh, mubin is clear, open. Is, is an avowed enemy. Is a clear enemy. Is an open enemy. 
So this part is actually very important. And I put a lot of emphasis on this verse for a number of reasons. Also, because some people, they say that the Dajjal is not mentioned in the Quran. So how we relate the Satan, the Dajjal, etc. And we actually uh, give, we will actually go into the elaborate analysis, not obviously in great details, but in some details during our discussion on Surah Kahab, where we actually explain the relationship of Satan and the Dajjal and, and the jinns and the human beings, etc. So, it does mention in the Quran that the Satan is the greatest enemy of mankind. But in spite of that, for whatever reason, uh, whether you understand it or not understand it, we will try to explain obviously uh, in during a discussion of Surah Kahab. The Prophet ﷺ, he stated that the Dajjal is the greatest fitna. So why is this and how is this and what is this exactly? What exactly does it mean, etc. We'll go into the details during our discussion on Surah Kahf. So, in verily, say the Satan is unto you, uh, is unto you too, an avowed enemy, a clear enemy, an open enemy. <clears throat> so, the Quran mentions the Satan as the greatest enemy of mankind, and the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned the Dajjal as the greatest fitna of Mecca. What's the relationship between the two? Is there a conflict between the two statements? Obviously, there is no conflict between the two statements, but apparently the conflict that appears, how to resolve them. So some of these things we will discuss during our discussion on Surah Kahf. They said, Our Lord, we have wronged our own souls. If thou forgive us not and bestow not upon us thy mercy, we shall certainly be lost. Allah said, get ye down with enmity between yourselves on earth will be your dwelling place and your means of livelihood for a time. He said, therein shall ye live and therein shall ye die, but from it shall ye be taken out at last. So this is was about the story of, story of Adam alayhi salam. So this is the additional information and also certain ad additional details are also mentioned in this passage but this passage this part is very important in shaitana lakum adubu mubin so try to remember this part and we'll get into the detailed analysis during a discussion on surah kahf o ye children of adam adam islam we have bestowed raiment upon you to cover your shame as well as to be an adornment to you but the raiment of righteousness that is the best such are among the signs of allah that they may receive admonition. Uh, we may also add uh, to the explanation that it was Satan's challenge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will, I will definitely ensure that most of them, I make them deviated from the correct path, from your path. And uh, is this coming out to be true today? If that is so, who is contributing to Satan's success? It is human beings themselves. Isn't it a matter of great shame that we should contribute to the success of Satan? It's a shame upon us. It's a shame upon humanity as a whole. But then not everyone will be deviated and so there will be remain those who are the righteous. <clears throat> oh, ye children of Adam, let not Satan seduce you in the same manner okay one more point that i would like to also like to mention is that some people say that why did adam eat the forbidden fruit i mean it is because of him because they, they, they allege that it is because of our father adam al -Islam, that we are here on the earth otherwise we would have been in paradise we could have enjoyed a jannah actually uh, allah knew what was going to happen it was in the knowledge of allah so that had to happen. But why did it happen? We can have actually now, we can actually try to explain why this happened, how this happened. Some people say that, uh, obviously Satan whispered, that is also already mentioned in this passage. Uh, some people said that Adam, the, that Satan, he could invoke the desire in Adam alayhi salam and Hawa salam alayha to taste of the fruit, of the forbidden fruit. But according to my understanding and interpretation, it's not so direct. There was a constant whispering, constant whispering from Satan uh, to, to the effect to, and at last what so happened was uh, 
when you are instructed on certain things after a long time what happens that instruction became becomes sort of fuzzy it becomes sort of weakened it becomes sort of uh, you have half of it in memory you don't remember you don't have clarity about it so adam alayhi salam actually forgot about this info about the instruction about the strictness of the instruction and so along with the and to couple with it the constant whisperings of satan and all these things happen to affect his human nature he is a human being he is a father adam alayhi salam is a father the father of all humanity all mankind so all these things affected him and then he tasted the fruit so not deliberately not willing to disobey this is the point i want to make many people say that he willingly disobeyed it's not the case many scholars have suggested it's not the case and i agree with that that opinion it's sort of a combination of a lot of factors including he uh, perhaps forgot at that point of time he perhaps uh, forgot the about the strictness if he did not forget about it totally as i said that perhaps uh, I, i'm a sincere advisor and i'm telling you that you, your lord does not want you to taste of the fruit uh, because you would become angels or beings that live forever and these things desires are constantly being whispered into adam alayhi salam he he forgot partly forgot partly uh, neglected partly and a whole lot of factors coming into and affecting his human nature i mean he's a human being so his nature is that of a human being so he forgot and this and all this contributed to his falling into the trap basically that's what i would like to state of about it falling into the trap of the guile of satan and he tasted of the fruit forbidden fruit so that was that and so we'll proceed from here o ye o ye children of adam let not satan seduce you in the same manner as he got your parents out of the garden stripping them of their raiment to expose their shame for he for he and his tribe see you from a position where you cannot see where you cannot see them we said the satans we made the satans friends only to those without faith now this is interesting this is very interesting for he that is the satan and his uh, tribe that, uh, that is other uh, jinns see you from a position where you cannot see them according to my understanding this refers to other dimensions that's the most appropriate and logical and rational answer it may be difficult for some of you who does not have sufficient knowledge about physics etc but that's what it is for example uh, we are three dimensional beings apparently we are three dimensional beings we understand three spatial dimensions and we also understand uh, one dimension of time very easily uh, that's the fact that's the sort of faculties we have been given and which we can capture but then imagine for a while that a two dimensional being exists he will not be able to conceive of a three dimensional reality of a three dimensional world so for us it is very difficult to conceive of a four dimensional being but if the jinn i'm not saying the jinn has to be a four dimensional being it can be any higher dimensional being but if the jinn were to be a four dimensional being then he would be very easy i mean it would be very easy for him to understand the reality of our three dimensional world but it would be very difficult for us to do the reverse that is as three dimensional beings it would be very difficult for us to understand and extrapolate a four dimensional concept so that is why it is mentioned that he can see you and his tribe can see you from a position from where where ye cannot see them because you don't have the faculties to penetrate the reality of the four dimensions through these physical eyes and even intellectually it's very difficult to conceive of such a concept so this is and these are some of the things about the dimensions that we intend to inshallah speak at length during a discussion on surah kahf i'm again and again referring to surah kahf primarily with two things if you have noticed carefully one is about the samawat the dimensions and the second is about the concept of dajjal and related issues when they commit an indecency they say we found our fathers doing so and allah commanded us thus say nay allah never command what is indecent do ye say of allah what ye know not say my lord hath commanded justice and that ye set your whole selves to him at every time and place of prayer 
and call upon him, making your devotion sincere, such as he created you in the beginning, so shall ye return. Some he hath guided, others have deserved the loss on, of their way, in that they took the Satans in preference to Allah for their friends and protectors and think that they receive guidance. O children of Adam, wear your beautiful apparel at every time and place of prayer. Eat and drink, but waste, but waste not by excess, for Allah loveth not the wasters. So, the word used is Israf, from which it is derived Musrif. Uh, Israf is waste, extravagance. Musrif is the one who wastes, one who commits extravagance. So, Musrifin is the plural of mus Musrif. La yuhubbil Musrifin. Uh, hub is, is love. So, la yuhubbil Musrifin. Allah does not, negation lies negation. Allah does not love the wasters. Say, who hath forbidden the beautiful gifts of Allah? which he hath produced for his servants and the things clean and pure which he hath provided for sustenance say they are in the life of this world for those who believe and purely for them on the day of judgment thus do we explain the signs in detail for those who know say the things that my lord hath indeed forbidden are indecent deeds whether open or secret sins and trespasses against truth or reason assigning of partners to allah for which he hath given no authority, and saying things about Allah of which ye have no knowledge. To every people is a term appointed. When their term is reached, not an hour can they cause delay, nor an hour can they advance it in anticipation. O ye children of Adam, whenever there come to you messengers from amongst you, rehearsing my signs unto you, those who are righteous and mend their lives on them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. But those who reject our signs and treat them with arrogance, they are companions of the fire to dwell therein forever. Who is more unjust than one who forgive, forges a lie against Allah or rejects his signs? For such, their, their portion appointed must reach them from the book of decrees until when a messengers of death arrive and take their souls. They say, where are the things that he used to invoke besides Allah? They will reply, they have left us in the lurch and they will bear witness against themselves that they had rejected Allah. He will say, Enter ye in the company of the peoples who passed away before you, men and jinns, into the fire. Every time a new people enters, it curses its sister people that went before until they follow each other all into the fire. Saith the last about the first, O oh Lord, it is these that misled us. So give them a double punishment in the fire. He will say, Doubled for all, but this, but this ye do not know. This is a very interesting and very frightening conversation that's uh, being depicted. What will happen? The scenario uh, uh, on the day of judgment, and when people are about to be thrown into the fire, the latter ones will say. Our Lord, it is these who misled us. It is because of these former peoples that we had been misguided in the life of the world. So double their punishment. Now they cannot avoid the punishment. They know that they have to go into the fire. So they will say, at least for those who have entered before us, it is because of these people we were misled. So double the punishment. He will say, double for all. But this you do not know. Then the first will say to the last, see then, no advantage have you over us. So taste you of the chastisement for all that he did. And the former ones who are already in the fire, they will say, did you have no understanding? Who told you to follow us? I mean, that's what the common understanding in, in, in interpretation is. There's no two difference of opinion about this. Who told you to follow us? You could have followed your own way. You could have followed the truth. Why did you not do so? So on that day of judgment, just this logic that our fathers and our forefathers did this, can they be wrong? This is what's going to happen. So take heed. So then the first will say to the last, see then no advantage have you over us. If you invoked a double punishment for us, it's double for you as well. So taste of the chastisement of all that you did. To those who reject our signs and treat them with arrogance, no opening where will there be of the gates of heaven nor will they enter the garden until the camel can pass through the eye of the needle. Such is our reward for those in sin. This is a beautiful simile that is being given. 
I'm uh, that the people of the hellfire and those who are destined for permanent hellfire they cannot enter the heaven unless a cap a camel can pass through the eye of the needle. Can the camel pass through the eye of the needle? They cannot. So similarly, the people of the hellfire who are destined for permanent hellfire, they can never enter paradise or heaven. For them, there is hell as a couch below and folds and folds of covering above. Such is our requital of those who do wrong. But those who believe and work righteousness, no burden do we place on any soul but that which it can bear. They will be companions of the garden therein to dwell forever, and we shall remove from their hearts any rancor. Beneath them will be rivers flowing, and they shall say, Praise be to Allah who hath guided us to this felicity. Never could we have found guidance had it not been for the guidance of Allah. Indeed, it was the truth that the messengers of our Lord brought unto us. And they shall hear the cry, Behold, the garden before you, ye have been made its inheritors for your deeds of righteousness. The companions of the garden will call out to the companions of the fire. We have indeed found the promises of our Lord to us true. Have you also found your Lord's promises true? They shall say yes, but a crier shall proclaim between them. The curse of Allah is on the wrongdoers. Those who would hinder men from the path of Allah, desiring to make something crooked, they were those who denied the hereafter. But they between them shall be a veil and on the heights the word the heights this is uh, i mean in arabic it's araf al araf this is where the chapter derives its name this is verse number 46 between them shall be a veil and on the heights will be men and on the araf will be men who would know everything by his marks they will call out to the companions of the garden peace be upon you they have not entered it, but they still hope to enter it. But they still hoped to enter it. When their eyes shall be turned towards the companions of the fire, they will say, O oh, our Lord, send us not to the company of the wrongdoers. The men on the heights will call to certain men whom they will know from the marks, saying, Of what profit to you were your hordes and your arrogant ways? Behold, are these not the men whom you swore that Allah with his mercy would never bless? Enter ye the garden. No fear shall be on you, nor shall you grieve. So there are certain men that many people think that they uh, will not receive the blessings of Allah. But there are those uh, also amongst men, amongst human beings, amongst mankind, who by the grace of Allah will eventually make it to, he, they will make it to Jannah. The companions of fire will call to the companions of the garden, pour down to us water or anything that Allah doth provide for your sustenance. They will say, both these things hath Allah forbidden to those who rejected him, such as took their religion to me, to be mere amusement and play, and were deceived by the life of the world, that day shall forget them as they forgot the, me the meeting of this day of theirs, and as they were wont to reject our science. For we had certainly sent unto them a book based on knowledge, which we explained in detail, a guide and a mercy to all who believe. Are they waiting for its fulfillment? On the day when it is fulfilled, those who have forgotten it will before will say the messengers of our Lord did indeed bring true tidings. Have we no intercessors now to intercede on our behalf or could we be sent back? Then should we behave differently from our behavior in the past? <clears throat> in fact, they will have lost their souls and <clears throat> the things they forged will leave them in the lurch. Your God and Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then he settled himself on the throne. He draweth the night as a veil over the day, each seeking the other in rapid succession, and the sun and the moon and the sun, the moon, and the stars all are subservient by his command. Verily, his are the creation and the command blessed and the command blessed be Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. Call on your Lord with humility and in private, for Allah loveth not those who trespass beyond bounds. Do not mischief on the earth, 
after it had been set in order, but call on him with fear and longing in your hearts. For the mercy of Allah is always near to those who do good. It is he who sendeth the winds like heralds of glad tidings, going before his mercy, when they have carried the heavy laden clouds. We drive them to a land that is dead, make rain to descend thereon, and produce every kind of harvest therein. Thus shall we raise up the dead, perchance ye may remember. From the land that is clean and good by the will of its cherisher springs up produce, springs up produce rich after its kind, but from the land that is bad springs up nothing but that which is scanty. Thus do we explain the signs by various symbols to those who are grateful. We sent Noah to his people. He said, O my people, worship Allah, ye have no other God but him. I fear for you the punishment of a dreadful day. The leaders of his people said, Ah, we see thee in evident error. He said, O my people, there is no error in me. On the contrary, I am a messenger from the Lord and cherisher of from the Lord and cherisher of the worlds. I but convey to you the message of my Lord, sincere is my advice to you, and I know and I know from Allah something that you know not. Do you wonder that there hath come to you a reminder from your own Lord? through a man of your own people to warn you, so that ye may fear Allah and happily receive his mercy. But they rejected him, and we delivered him and those with him in the ark. But we overwhelmed in the flood those who rejected our signs. They were indeed blind people to the Ad. So this is the story of Nuh al-Islam described in brief, and then the story of Ad, the story of Hud al-Islam is now being described. To the Ad people we sent Hud, one of their own brethren, he said, O my people, worship Allah. Ye have no other God but him. Will ye not fear Allah? The leaders of the unbelievers among his people said, Ah, we see thou art in folly, and we think thou art a liar. He said, O my people, there is no folly in me, but I am a messenger from the Lord and cherisher of the worlds. From the Lord and cherisher of the worlds. I but convey to you the messages of of my Lord, I am to you a sincere and trustworthy, trust, trustworthy adviser. Do you wonder that there hath come to you a message from your own, from your Lord through a man of your own people to warn you? Call in remembrance that he made you inheritors after the people of Noah, and gave you a, gave you a stature tall among the nations. Call in remembrance the benefits he have received from Allah so that so ye may prosper. They said, Comest thou to us that we may worship Allah alone and give up that which our fathers used to worship? Bring us what thou threatenest, threatenest, threatenest us with, if so be that thou tellest the truth. <clears throat> he said, Punishment and wrath have already come upon you from your Lord. Dispute ye with me, over names which ye have devised, ye and your fathers, without authority from Allah, then wait, I am amongst you also waiting. We saved him and those who adhered to him by our mercy, and we cut off the roots of those who rejected our signs and did not believe. So with this, the story of Hud al-Islam ends and the story of Salih al-Islam begins. The Thamud people, the story of Salih al-Islam. To the Thamud people, we sent Salih, Ali Salam, one of their own brethren. He said, O my people, worship Allah, ye have no other God but him. Now hath come unto you a clear sign from your Lord. This she camel of Allah is a sign unto you. So leave her to praise in Allah's land, and let her come to and, and let her come to no harm, or ye shall be seized with the grievous punishment. And remember how he made you inheritors after the Ad people and gave you habitations in the land. Ye build for yourselves palaces and castles in open plains and carve out homes in the mountains. So bring to remembrance of the benefits ye have received from Allah and you refrain from evil and mischief on the earth. <coughs> the leaders of the arrogant party among his people said to those who were reckoned powerless, those among them who believed, know ye indeed that Saul is a messenger from his Lord, they said, we do indeed believe in the revelation which hath been sent through him. The arrogant party said, for our part we reject what ye believe in. 
then they then they hamstrung the she camel and insolently defied defied the order of the lord saying O Saleh, bring about thy threats if thou art a messenger of Allah. <laughs> so the earthquake took them unawares and they lay prostrate in the homes in the morning. So Saleh left them saying, O my people, I did indeed convey to you the message for, for which I was sent by my Lord. I give you good counsel, but ye love not good counselors. With this, the story of Sali al -Salam ends and the story of Lut al -Salam now begins. He also sent Lut al -Salam. He said to his people, Do ye commit lewdness such as no people in creation ever committed before you? So this is talking about gay or homosexuality. Uh, this social evil appeared for the first time during the time of Lut al -Salam. For you practice your lusts on men in preference to women, you are indeed a people transgressing beyond bounds. And this and his people gave no answer but this. They said, drive them out of our city. These are indeed men who want to be clean and pure. <clears throat> but we saved him and his family, except his wife. She was those who lagged behind. Now about the story of the wife of Saul, uh, about the wife of Lut alayhi salam, it is mentioned that she was not an unchaste woman. But then what so happened was that she uh, maintained good relations with the with the pervert men in the sense that uh, when the angels came to visit Lut salam and Ibrahim salam in the form of man, handsome men, so she informed the perverted transgressors, the homosexuals, the gays basically. Uh, she broke the news to them and so those people came in search of their new targets what what more could i say new targets so this is the crime she was involved in this is the sin she was involved in and hence as a punishment she was of those who lagged behind this is how allah describes the event and we rain down on them a shower of brimstone then see what was the end of those who indulged in sin and crime so with this the story of the story of Lut salam ends and the story of Shu'aib salam begins. Now about Shu'aib salam it is mentioned or I shall, I shall uh, may, I'll give a very brief background about Shu'aib salam uh, I mean my name is based on his name. Shu'aib Muhammad is the name of, of two prophets. So I'm his namesake. I should have, I, sh I should not call the reverse that he is my names obviously. For he is a prophet of Allah, he is a prophet and messenger of Allah, and he lived many generations before. So basically, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he had three wives. I'm not aware of any other wife. It may be he had more, but I'm aware of three. And in each of these three, in each of these three progenies that were to follow, there was a prophet. So Ismail alayhi salam, born from his second wife Hajar Salamun Aleha second wife but he she gave birth to his first son Ibrahim al Islam's first son Ismail al Islam and his wife Sara his first wife the first wife of Ibrahim al Islam gave birth to his second son Ishaq al Islam and there was a third wife Katura in the Bible it's referred to as Ketura that is that, that, that branch is referred to as Bani Katura. So Katura had a son by the name of Madian, and most of the tribes uh, were the names or the, or the places were named after the after a person who lived in that in that in that region. For example, the people of Ad. Ad was a person, and the people of Thamud. Thamud is the name of place, but it was the name of a person originally, after whom that place was also referred to as the place of Thamud. So, Madian was the name of a place, the same place that Musa al Islam spent a good amount of his life uh, in, in Madian. So, Madian was a person and he was the son of Keturah, so the third son of Ibrahim al Islam. So, two of his sons were direct prophets, Ismail al Islam and Ishaq al Islam, but Madian was not a prophet. 
but in the progeny of Madian, there came a prophet and he was Prophet Shoaib salam. So to the Madian people were sent Shoaib. Why I give the details is because about Ismail salam and Ishaq salam, we have a lot of information, but very few people know about uh, Shoaib salam. Where does he actually come in? Where does he actually fit in? So he is one of the uh, generations after Madian who was the son of Ibrahim salam through his third wife, Katura. To the Madian people, we sent Shuaib salam, one of their own brethren. He said, O my people, worship Allah. You have no other God but him. Now hath come unto you a clear sign from your Lord. Give just measure and weight, nor withhold from the people the things that are their due. And do no mischief on the earth after it has been set in order. That will be best for you if you have faith. So the first time the, the economic and the financial evil that started was during the time of Shoaib al-Islam. The people committed this. They gave less measure and less weights when they sold things. So Shoaib al-Islam warned against this economic corruption and then uh, that, that story is being now described. And squat not on every road, breathing threats, hindering from the path of Allah those who believe in him and seek to make it crooked. But remember how ye were little and he gave you increase and see what was the end of those who did, who did mischief. And if there is a party among you who believes in the message with which I have been sent and a party which does not believe, hold yourselves in patience until Allah doth decide between us, for he is the best to decide. So this is in the middle of the story of Shoaib al salam and uh, the, the Jews number 9 begins and it is cut across the story of Shoaib al salam So the Jews number 9 actually begins with this verse, the leaders, the arrogant party among his people said, O Shoaib, Ya Shoaib, O Shoaib al salam we shall certainly, I mean they did not call him Shoaib al salam we are calling him Shoaib al salam we name the, we refer to all the prophets as with alayhi salam. So, O, o Shoaib alayhi salam, we shall certainly drive thee out of the city, thee and those who believe with thee, or else ye, thou and they, shall have to return to our religion. He said, what even though we do detest them? We should indeed forge a lie against Allah if we return to your religion after Allah hath rescued us therefrom. Nor could we be by any manner of means return thereto unless it be as in the will of Allah our Lord. Our Lord comprehends all things in his knowledge in Allah is our trust. Our Lord decide thou between us and our people in truth for thou art the best to decide. The leaders, the unbelievers among his people said, If ye follow Shuaib salam, be sure then ye are ruined. But the earthquake took them unawares, and they lay prostrate in the homes before the morning. The men who rejected Shuaib salam became as if they had never been in, their, in the homes where they had flourished. The men who rejected Shuaib, it was they who were ruined. So Shuaib salam left them saying, Oh my people, I did convey to you the message for which I was sent by my Lord. I gave you good counsel, but how shall I lament over a people? How, but how shall I lament over a people who refuse to believe? Whenever, so I think with this, the story of Shoaib al-Islam ends and there's some general verses now that follows. Uh, just uh, one more point I'd like to add about Shoaib al-Islam that every prophet had some attributes, special attributes. I mean, all the prophets had all the qualities, the good qualities, but some prophets had some special attributes. It is said that Shoaib al-Islam was the greatest orator uh, amongst all the prophets. Uh, for example, uh, yesterday we discussed about Ibrahim al-Islam being the special friend of Allah, Khalilullah. So similarly, Shoaib al-Islam is considered to be the greatest orator amongst all the prophets. For example, Dawud al-Islam, it is said about Dawud al-Islam, he has the most beautiful voice amongst all the prophets. Uh, and about the last Prophet Muhammad it is said that he had all the qualities of all the prophets combined. 
may not necessarily be at that same level, but then it was a beautiful combination of all the attributes of all the prophets. So the general passage now continues. Whenever we sent a prophet to a town, we took up its people in suffering and adversity in order that, that they might call in humility. Then we changed their suffering into prosperity until they grew and multiplied and began to say our fathers too were touched by suffering and of affluence. Behold, we took them to account of a sudden while they realized not their peril. If the people of the towns had put had but believed and feared Allah, we should indeed have opened out to them all kinds of blessings from heaven and earth, but they rejected the truth, and we brought them to book for their misdeeds. Did the people of the towns feel secure against the coming of our wrath by night while they were asleep, or else did they feel secure against its coming in broad daylight while they played about carefree? Did they then feel secure against Allah's devising, but no one can feel secure from the plan of Allah except those doomed to ruin. To those who inherit the earth in succession to its previous possessors, is it not a guiding lesson that if we so willed, we could punish them too for their sins and seal up their hearts so that they could not hear? So we'll continue basically with a surah araf such were the towns whose story we thus relate unto thee there came indeed to them their messengers with clear signs but they would not believe what they had rejected before thus doth allah seal up their hearts of those who reject faith most of them we found not men true to the covenant but most of them we found rebellious and disobedient then after them we sent Moses with our signs to Pharaoh and his chiefs, but they wrongfully rejected them. So see what was the end of those who made mischief. Moses said, O Pharaoh, I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds, one for, one for whom it is right to say nothing but truth about Allah. Now have I come unto you, unto you people, from your Lord with a clear sign. So let the children of Israel depart along with me. Pharaoh said, if indeed thou hast come with a sign, show it forth, if thou tellest the truth. Now we are already into the story of Musa alayhi salam and Pharaoh and the conversation with Pharaoh. Then Moses threw his rod and behold, it was a serpent, plain for all to see. And we and he drew out of his hand and behold, it was white to all beholders. Said the chiefs of the people to Pharaoh, this is indeed a sorcerer well versed. His plan is to get you out of your land then what is it ye counsel? He sa they said, Keep him and his brother in suspense for a while and send to the city's men to collect and bring up to thee all our sorcerers well versed. So there came the sorcerers to Pharaoh. They said, Of course, we shall have a suitable reward if we win. He said, Yeah, and more, for ye shall in that case be raised to post nearest to my person. They said, O Moses, will thou throw first, or shall we have the first throw? Said Moses, Throw ye first. So when they threw, they be bewitched the eyes of the people and struck terror into them, and they showed a great feat of magic. We reveal to Moses, Throw thy rod, and behold, it swallows up all the falsehoods which they fake. Thus a truth was confirmed, and all that they did was made of no effect. So they were vanquished there and then, and turned about humble. But the sorcerers fell down prostrate in adoration, saying, We believe in the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of Moses and Aaron, said Pharaoh. Believe ye in him before I give you permission? So look at the arrogant way in which Pharaoh is not discussing, is, is talking to them. Said Pharaoh, Believe in, ye in him before I give you permission? Who gave you the permission? Did I give you the permission to believe in his Lord? Surely this is a trick which ye have planned in the city to drive out its people, but soon shall we know the consequences. So now Pharaoh is accusing that this uh, magician, Moses, is, must be your teacher and you have played a trick with us. Be sure I will cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides and I will crucify you all. So this is a punishment 
which we had also covered in in one of the previous chapters and this is what pharaoh said at that time be sure i will cut off your hands and your feet on opposite sides and i will crucify you all they said for us we are but sent back unto our lord but thou dost wreck thy vengeance on us simply because we believed in the signs of our lord when they reached us our lord pour out on us patience and constancy and take our souls unto thee as muslims who bow to thy will said the chiefs of pharaoh's people will thou leave moses and his people to spread mischief in the land and to abandon thee and thy gods he said their male children will be slain only their females will be saved alive and we have over them power irresistible said moses to his people pray for help from allah and wait in patience and constancy for the earth is allah's to give us as a heritage to such of his servants as he pleases this is interesting this is important the earth the earth is allah's that's fine but he gives to whom does he give the earth to to give us to give as a heritage to such of his servants as he pleases so only to those whom allah pleases please pleases he gives the land the inheritance of and the end is the best for the righteous they said we had we have had nothing but trouble both before and after thou camest to us he said it may be that your lord will destroy your enemy and make you inheritors in the earth that so he may see you see how ye act we punish the people of pharaoh with years of drought and shortness of crops that they might receive it monition but when good times came they said this is due to us when gripped by calamity they ascribed it to evil omens connected with moses and those with him behold in truth the omens of evil are theirs in allah's side but most of them do not understand they said to moses whatever be the signs thou bringest to work therewith thy sorcery on us we shall never believe in thee so we sent on them wholesale death locus lies frogs and blood science openly self explained but they were steeped in arrogance a people given to sin and when the plague fell on them they said o moses on our behalf call on thy lord in virtue of his promise to thee if thou wilt remove the plague from us we shall truly believe in thee and we shall send away the children of israel with thee but when we remove the plague from them according to a fixed term which we had to fulfill behold they broke their word so we exacted retribution from them we drowned them in the sea because they rejected our signs and failed to take warning from them and we made a people considered weak and of no account inheritors of lands in both east and west lands whereon we send down our blessings the the fair promise of the lord was fulfilled for the children of israel because they had patience and constancy and we level to the ground the great works and and fine buildings which pharaoh and his people erected with such pride we took the children of israel with safety across the sea they came upon a people devoted entirely to some idols they had they said o moses fashion for us a god like unto the gods they have he said surely ye are a people without knowledge as to these folk the cult they are in is bound to destruction and vain is the worship which they which they practice he said shall i seek for you a god other than allah when it is he who hath endowed you with gifts above the nations and remember we rescued you from pharaoh's people who afflicted you with the worst of punishment who slew your male children and saved alive your females in that was a momentous trial from the lord we appointed for moses 30 nights and completed the period with 10 more thus was completed the term with his lord 40 nights and moses had charged his brother aaron that is harun alayhi salam musa alayhi salam and harun alayhi salam before he went up act for me amongst my people do right and follow not the way of those who do mischief when moses came to the place appointed by us and his lord addressed him he said o my lord show thyself to me so this is the part in arabic qala rabbi 
أريني أنظر إليك قال لن تراني you can't see me لن تراني O my Lord, show thyself to me that I may look upon thee. Allah said, By no means canst thou see me direct, but look but look upon the mount. If it abide in its place, then shalt thou see me. When his Lord manifested himself to the mount, he made it as dust. And Moses fell down in a swoon. When he recovered his senses, he said, Glory be to thee. To thee I turn in repentance, and I am the first to believe. The word used is mu'min. Allah said, O Moses, I have chosen thee above other men by the messages. I have given thee the words I have spoken to thee. Take then the revelation which I give thee and be of those who give thanks. And we ordained for him in the tablets in all matters, admonition and explanation of all things and said, Take and hold these with firmness and enjoin thy people to hold fast by the best in the precepts. Soon shall I show you the homes of the wicked, how they lie desolate. Those who behave arrogantly on the earth in defiance of right, them will I turn away from my signs. Even if they see all the signs, they will not believe in them. And if they see the way of right conduct, they will not adopt it as the way. But if they see the way of but if they see the way of error, that is the way they will adopt. For they have rejected our signs and failed to take warning from them. Those who reject our signs and the meeting in the hereafter, vain are the deeds. Can they expect to be rewarded except as they be, as they have as they have wrought? The people of Moses made in his absence out of their ornaments the body of a calf for worship having lowing sound did they not see that it could neither speak to them nor show them the way they took it for worship and they did wrong when they repented and saw that they had erred they said if our lord have not mercy upon us and forgive us we shall indeed be among the losers when moses came came back to his people angry and grieved he said, Evil it is that they that ye have done in my place, in my absence. Did ye make haste to bring on the judgment of your Lord? He put down the tablet, seized his brother by the hair of his head, by the by the by the lihia, which is the beard, seized by his beard, and dragged him to him. Aaron said, Son of my mother. The people did indeed reckon me as not, and I and went near to slaying me. Make not the enemies rejoice over my misfortune, and count thou me amongst the people of sin. Moses prayed, O my Lord, forgive me and my brother. Admit us to thy mercy, for thou art the most merciful of those who show mercy. Those who took the calf for worship will indeed be overwhelmed with wrath from their Lord, and with shame in this life. Thus do we recompense those who invent falsehoods. But those who do wrong but repent, before proceeding, uh, a derived point that we can make from this particular verse, from verse number 150, is the only reference about the beard in the Quran. Uh, besides this particular verse, there are many statements in the Hadith statements, in the Hadith, that which speaks about the beard, the status of the beard as being fard, as compulsory. And so that's uh, one thing which I thought I could just state about this. <clears throat> but those who do wrong, but repent thereafter and truly believe, verily thy Lord is thereafter of forgiving most merciful. When the anger of Moses was appeased, he took up the tablets. In the writing thereon was guidance and mercy for such as fear the Lord. And Moses chose 70 of his people for our place of meeting. When they were seized with violent quaking, he prayed, O my Lord, if it had been thy will thou couldst have destroyed long before both them and me, wouldst thou destroy us for the deeds of the foolish ones among us? This is no more than thy trial. By it thou causest whom thou wilt to whom thou wilt stray and whom thou leadest 
whom thou wilt into the right path. Thou art our protector, so forgive us and give us thy mercy, for thou art the best of those who forgive. And ordain for us what which, that which is good in this life and in the hereafter. For we have turned unto thee, he said, I afflict my punishment on you, I will. But my mercy extended to all things, that mercy I shall ordain for those who do right and feel zakkar. And those who believe in our signs. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find mentioned in their own scriptures, in the Torah, in the Torah and the Gospel, for he commands them what is just and forbids them what is evil. He allows them as lawful what is good and pure and prohibits them for, from what is bad and impure. He releases them from their heavy burdens and from the yokes that are upon them. So it is those who believe in him, honor him, help him and follow the light which is sent down with him. It is they who will prosper. This verse of Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse number 157 is very, very important. It says, <clears throat> those who follow the messenger, the prophet, the Ummi. Now, the word Ummi, which is usually translated as the unlettered, actually has two meanings. It actually has two meanings. The word Ummi, one of the meanings is unlettered. Now, do not ever, do not ever make the mistake of translating unlettered as, as foolish or ignorant. Unlettered does not mean so. I would like to narrate you a story, a real life story which happened with a, with a, with a scholar. I mean, he made a, a very grave mistake. People considered him to be a scholar and he translated Ummi as Jahil, Jahil in, in Bangla or Hindi or Urdu. It means ignorant, foolish. And the people who were listening to that lecture got him down and gave him a good bashing. The bashing of his life so that he'll never forget and he will never make the mistake again of translating unlettered as ignorant or foolish, as jahil. Now, unlettered simply means a person who is not able to read or write. That does not, that does not prevent him from becoming the most knowledgeable, from becoming the most wise of all people. And the Prophet ﷺ is a perfect example of that. A person who cannot read or write, but for one whose teacher is Allah himself, he becomes the most knowledgeable and the most wise. So never make the mistake of translating Ummi as anything else besides unlettered. Don't ever make the mistake of translating it as foolish or ignorant or jahil. Ummi has a second meaning. This is a normal meaning and when the Jews use the word Ummi, they have a special connotation. They use it to refer to a non-Jew person, non-Jew person. And both the meanings are perfectly apt and appropriate for this verse. So those, so let us uh, read this verse with this understanding. Those who follow the Rasul, that is the messenger, the Nabi, that is the prophet, the Ummi, the unlettered person, as well as the non-Jew, a person who is not a Jew person, whom they find mentioned in their own scriptures. And about this prophet, about the Prophet ﷺ, they find mentioned in their own scriptures. In the Torah, in the Torah and the Gospel, both in the Torah and the Injil. For he commands them what is just and forbids them what is evil. He allows them as lawful what is good and pure and prohibits them from what is bad and impure. He releases them from their heavy burdens and from the yokes that are upon them. So it is those who believe in him, honor him, help him and follow the light which is sent down with him. It is they who will prosper. So the Prophet ﷺ has been mentioned in, in both in the Torah and the Injil, both in the Torah, Torah and the Gospel. And even to this day, if you read the Torah and the Gospel, 
uh, or the Torah and the Injil, you will find the references to the Prophet Sallallahu even to this day. Now, this is one of my favorite subjects as, as, a, as an expert in comparative religion. This is one of my favorite subjects, but there's such a vast subject that if I go into it, it will take a long, long time to discuss. So I'd request you to go and look at some of my lectures, especially those which discusses about Christianity, Islam and Christianity, especially the debate between me and Bishop Raju that would give much, much more details on the subject and about this and about this verse, about the references of the Prophet Sallallahu in the Bible. Say, O men, I am sent unto you all as the messenger of Allah to whom belongeth the dominion of the heavens and the earth. There is no God but he. It is he that giveth both life and death. So believe in Allah and his messenger, the unlettered prophet, who believeth in Allah and his words. Follow him that so ye may be guided. Again, uh, this last part. So believe in Allah and his messenger and the prophet the unlettered the non-jew so and his messenger the prophet the ummi which means both unlettered the unlettered as well as the non-jew who believeth in Allah and his words, follow him. So the Prophet, what does he do? The message, what does he do? The Prophet Sallallahu who he believeth in Allah and his words, follow him that so ye may be guided. O the people of Moses, there is a section who guide and do justice in the light of truth. We divided them into 12 tribes or nations. We directed Moses by inspiration. When his thirsty people asked him for water, Strike the rock with thy staff, out of it there gushed forth twelve springs, each group knew its own place, of own place for water. We gave them the shade of clouds and sent down to them manna and salva. Now, al manna and as salva, it is better to keep it with the same translation. I mean, it is better to use the Arabic word. We sent down to them al manna, the manna, and a salva, the salva. Now, manna, I think I've already explained this possibly in Surah Maida, that al manna is some sort of grain, so it provides your carbohydrate requirements, and a salva is meat, bird meat, so it supplies your protein requirements, takes care of your protein requirements, so both grains and meat. We gave them the shade of clouds and, and sent down to them the manna and the salva, saying, Eat of the good things we have provided for you. But they rebelled. To us they did no harm, but they harmed their own souls. And remember it was said to them, Dwell in this town and eat therein as ye wish, but say, Forgive us and enter the gate in a posture of humility. We shall forgive you your faults. We shall increase the portion of those who do good. But the transgressors among them changed the word from what, from that which had been given them. So we sent them, sent on them a plague from heaven. For that they repeatedly transgressed. Ask them concerning the town standing close by the sea. Behold, they transgressed in the matter of the Sabbath. For on the day of the Sabbath, their fish did come to them, openly holding up their heads. But on the day they had no Sabbath, they came not. Thus did we make a trial of them, for they were given to transgression. When some of them said, Why do you preach to a people whom Allah will destroy or visit with a terrible punishment? Said the preachers, To discharge our duty to, to, to your Lord, and perchance they may fear him. When they disregarded the warnings that had been given them, we rescued those who forbade evil, but we visited the wrongdoers with a grievous punishment because they were given to transgression. When in their insolence they transgressed all prohibitions, we said to them, be ye apes despised and rejected. We have already discussed this, uh, this verse which has come again in one of the previous chapters, be ye apes despised and rejected. 
Behold, the Lord did declare that he would send against them to the day of judgment those who would afflict them with grievous chastisement. The Lord is quick in retribution, but he is also of forgiving most merciful. We broke them up into sections. Now, these are very interesting verses. Uh, there are some connections about uh, these verses, especially verse number 167 and 168 with the story of Sur al-Kahf and the Jal. So this is uh, very important. Verse number 168 says, We broke them up into sections on this earth. There are among them some that are the righteous and some that are the opposite. We have tried them with both prosperity and adversity in order that they might turn to us. Now, what exactly does these two verses, these two verses mean? Let us have a brief explanation. Verse number 167 and 168. Behold, thy Lord did declare that he would send against them, against the Jews, to the day of judgment, those who would afflict them with grievous chastisement. So the Jews have been punished for their transgression again and again because of their rejection of the prophets, because of their killing of the prophets, because of their execution, beheading of the prophets, basically massive transgression on their part. So the Lord has punished them through different groups of people at different phases in history. And the last time they will be punished will be at the hands of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam who will restore the correct understanding of Islam, an understanding which provides justice, gives justice to the society, which is based on the truth, which results in peace in the society. So this is what is being referred to. So it, they have been punished. Even, even the Christians have persecuted them for a long, long time now. So this is close to Suhoor time, but we will try to cover the rest of the portions of this Surah uh, quickly. Or at least let us complete this part of the explanation. So the Jews have been punished by the Christians even for a long, long time. For some 2000 years, they have been punished by the Christians. And today with the emergence of the Judeo-Christian civilization, things have turned upside down. So, and the last time they will be punished will be at the hands of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. So that is what this verse refers to. The Lord is quick in retribution, but he is also of forgiving most merciful. Both the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described in this verse. And the Jews, for 2000 years, for some 2000 years, their condition was that they did not have a land of their own. So Allah says, we broke them up, we broke them up into sections on this earth. There are among them some that are righteous and some that are the opposite. We have tried them with both prosperity and adversity in order that they might turn to us. After them succeeded an evil generation. They inherited the book, but they chose for themselves the vanities of this world, saying for excuse, everything will be forgiven us. Even so, if similar vanities came their way, they would again seize them. Was not the covenant of the book taken from them that they would not ascribe to Allah anything but the truth and they study what is in the book? But best for the righteous is the home in the hereafter. Will you not understand? As for those who hold fast by the book and establish regular prayer, never shall we suffer the reward of the righteous to perish. When we raise the mount over them as if it had been a canopy, and they thought it was going to fall on them, we said, hold firmly to what we have been given, we have, we have given you, and bring ever to remembrance what is therein, perchance ye may fear Allah. When the Lord drew forth from the children of Adam, from their loins, their descendants, and made them testify concerning themselves, saying, Am I not your Lord's, am I not, sorry, am I not your Lord, who cherishes and sustains you? Alast birabbikum, am I not your Lord? Kalubala. They will say, why not? Yes, indeed. They said, yeah, we do testify. Kalubala shahidna. 
yeah that they said so again am i not your lord who cherishes and sustains you they said yeah we do testify this lest you should say on the day of judgment of this we were never mindful or lest you should say our fathers before us took false gods but we are the descendants after them will thou then destroy us because of the deeds of men who followed falsehood thus do we explain the thing thus do we explain the signs in detail and perchance they may turn unto us relate to them the story of the man to whom we sent down whom we sent our signs but he passed them by so satan followed him up and he went astray if it had been our will we should have elevated him with our signs but he inclined to the earth and followed his own vain desires his similitude is that of a dog if you attack him he lolls out his tongue or if you leave him alone he still lolls out his tongue that is the similitude of those who reject our signs so relate the story perchance they may reflect evil as the examples are people who reject our signs and wrong wrong their own souls evil as the example are people who reject our signs and wrong their own souls whom allah doth guide he is on the right path whom he rejects from his guidance such are the persons who lose many are the jinns and men we have made for hell this is a verse which is very frightening walaqad dharana li jahannam walaqad dharana li jahannam kaseeram min al jinn wal ins that we have indeed prepared the majority of from among from among the I mean, we have prepared for the hellfire the majority from among the jinn the jinn race and the human beings what a frightening verse walaqad zarana li jahannam kaseeram min al jinn wal ins kaseeram the majority of them walaqad zarana we have indeed we have already created them we have destined them we have intended for them walaqad zarana already we have designed this thing li jahannam for the hell fire what kasiram that the majority of minal jinni wal insi would be doomed for the hell fire among the human beings among the jinn race as well as the human kind human kind what a frightening verse many are the jinns and men we have made for hell they have hearts wherewith they understand not eyes wherewith they see not and ears wherewith they hear not they are like cattle nay more misguided for they are heedless of warning and not just they have been described this is verse number 178 179 chap surah araf chapter number 7 verse number 179 it's a very important verse it just does not give what will happen but gives the reason why such a thing will happen lahum qulubul qulubul la lahum qulubul la yafqahuna biha wa lahum aynul la yubsiruna biha so the reason is now being this lahum qulubun la yafqahuna biha that they have been given hearts but they do not understand with it wa lahum aynun la yubsiruna biha they have been given eyes but they do not see with it wa lahum azanun la yasmauna biha and they have been given ears but they do not hear with it ulaika kal anam they are like cattle bal hum adal no they are more misguided than that ulaika humul ghafilun they are truly heedless of the warning so this is the verse this is a very strong verse which warns us so the standard translation is was we have what we have already read before but the detailed translation is through the arabic which i have just given you just now many are the jinns and men we have made for hell they have hearts wherewith they understand not eyes wherewith they see not and ears wherewith they hear not they are like cattle nay more misguided for they are heedless of warning so look at the usage of the words human beings have been compared to cattle to cows to goats to sheep to sheep they have been they have been described as cattle no they are more misguided than cattle why because allah has given us these wonderful faculties he has given us the heart for, with which we can understand He has given us the eyes with which we can see, 
and he has given us ears with, with which we can hear. But if we do not use our faculty, if we choose not to use our faculties and remain misguided, who is it that can guide us after that? The most beautiful names belong to Allah, so call on him by them. But shun such men as distort his names. For what they do, they will soon be required, requited. Of those we have created are people who direct others with truth and dispense justice therewith. Those who reject our signs, we will lead them step by step to ruin, while they know not. Respite will I grant unto them, for my scheme is strong and unfailing. Do they not reflect? Their companion is not seized with madness. He is but a perspicuous warner. Do they see nothing in the kingdom of the heavens and the earth? and all that Allah hath created, do they not see that it may well be that their term is nigh drawing to an end, in nigh drawing to an end, in what message after this will they then believe? To such as Allah rejects from his guidance, there can be no guide. He will leave them in their trespasses, wandering in destruction. They ask thee about the final hour, when will when will be its appointed time say the knowledge thereof is with my lord alone none but he can reveal as to when it will occur heavy were its burden through the heavens and the earth only all of a sudden will it come to you they ask thee as if thou wert eager in search thereof say the knowledge thereof is with allah alone but most men know not so the knowledge of the timing of the day of judgment of the hour of doom is possessed by no one besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet does not know the exact time, does not know the time. The Prophet was asked and he said that I have no knowledge thereof. He said certain things, it's mentioned in the Hadith of Jibra'il uh, which is mentioned in various books of Hadith also in Sahih Muslim, the very first Hadith and they're about some seven consecutive hadiths which discuss about the same same of the statement that he was asked the question and he made a statement which implies that he does not know and isa alayhi salam was also asked the question the same question and he replied what in a sense means he does not know and it is also clear from the hadith of jibreel that jibreel alayhi salam does not know so a knowledge which the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam does not have of which the messiah jesus Isa alayhi salam does not have, which Jibra'il alayhi salam does not have. Do you think it's possible for anyone to have that knowledge? Anyone who claims to have that knowledge, do you think he is a Muslim? If he is not, what then he is? That's for something for you to ponder over. So, those who are claiming that they have the knowledge of the hour, the claim is false, as false as darkness. Say, I have no power over any good or harm to myself except as Allah willeth. If I had knowledge of the unseen, I should have multiplied all good, and no evil should have touched me. I am but a warner and a bringer of glad tidings to those who have faith. It is he who created you from a single person and made his mate of like nature in order that he might dwell with her in love. When they are united, she bears a light burden and carries it about unnoticed. When she grows heavy, they both pray to Allah, their Lord, saying, If thou givest us a goodly child, we vow we shall ever be grateful. But when he giveth them a goodly child, they, they ascribe to others a share in the gift they, had, they have received. But Allah is exalted high above the partners they ascribe to him. Do they, do they indeed ascribe to him as partners things that can create nothing but are themselves created? No aid can they give the, no aid can they give them, nor can they aid themselves. If you call them to guidance, they will not obey. For you it is the same whether you call them or you keep silent. Verily, those whom you call upon besides Allah are servants like unto you. Call upon them and let them listen to your prayer, if you're indeed truthful. Have you I mean the, it is a rhetoric question if you think it's going to benefit just try calling them and you will realize it's of no benefit. Have ye, have they feet to walk with or hands 
to lay hold with or eyes to see with or ears to hear with say call your god partners scheme your worst against me and give me no respite for my protector is allah who reveal the book from time to time and he will befriend befriend the righteous but those he call upon besides him are unable to help you and indeed to help you and indeed to help themselves they can't even help themselves how can they help you if thou callest them to guidance they hear not thou will see them looking at thee but they see not hold to forgiveness command what is right but turn away from the ignorant if a suggestion from satan assail thy mind seek refuge with allah for he heareth and knoweth all things so now for the last few verses those who fear allah when a thought of evil from satan assaults them bring allah to remembrance when lo they see when lo they see all right but their brethren the evil ones plunge them deeper into error and never relax their efforts if thou bring them not a revelation they say why hast thou not got it together say i but follow what is revealed to me from my lord this is nothing but lights from your lord and guidance and mercy for any who have faith when the quran is read listen to it with attention and hold your peace that he may receive mercy now this is a verse uh, which can have some issues associated with it but okay let's discuss discuss it in very brief this is surah araf chapter number 7 verse number 204 when the quran is read listen to it with attention and hold your peace that you may receive mercy now uh, there is a difference of opinion about uh, when you're praying in congregation and the imam recites surah fatiha uh, should you recite or should you not this is uh, this there is a difference of opinion amongst with the, with this issue so some people and there are also hadith statements uh, which suggests that every person must i mean without the surah fatiha their prayer is void it's null so they claim that you should recite surah fatiha whether you're imam or the muqtadi whether you're leading the congregation or praying as a follower in the congregation and they bring this verse those who say that you those th there is another group which says that you need not recite surah fatiha because it's mentioned in the quran that when the quran is read listen to it with attention and hold your peace that you may receive mercy so they bring up this verse now the correct understanding is that now this is a fake issue so if i give you the verdict there will always be those who will bring in the other viewpoint so it's not very easy the correct view is that if it's a silent prayer that you recite surah fatiha and if it's a loud prayer you listen to the qirat of the imam of the surah fatiha and this is your subconscious recitation as well you listen to it not absent mindedly but with focused attention and this is also the opinion of imam malik radhiyallahu anhu Imam Malik, Ramadulale, <clears throat> and do thou, O reader, bring thy Lord to remembrance in thy very soul with humility, and remember without loudness in words in the mornings and evenings, and be not those, be not thou of those who are unheedful, those who he, those who are near to thy Lord disdain not to worship Him, then glorify Him and prostrate before Him. so this has already become a very long uh, discussion uh, i i i fully understand it's difficult sometimes to have a focused attention for such a long period of time so we'll just draw a close to this uh, chapter this is already over and in the next session inshallah we'll start with surah anfal so that's it for this session